Hi everybody, this is Dr. Esteban Velez, and I'm going to be going over a little demo and tutorial of the J. Merida iDixel uh, CBCT viewing software. Uh, this is a software that comes with all of their CBCT units. I uh, currently own a J. Merida R100 uh, CBCT unit here in the office. We uh, had it installed back in April. A uh, fantastic unit. I haven't had any issues or gripes so far. I've uh, been using the viewing software for all of my viewing needs and I use Blue Sky Plan for all of my implant planning and um, uh, 3D printing of my surgical guides. So between the two, using this and Blue Sky Plan has been a um, kind of a fantastic marriage of the two softwares and they both get done exactly what I need uh, to get done in the office. So no complaints here. Uh, my install was done. I'm going to throw out a little um, uh, a little shout out to David Hanning with Dental TI. They did my setup of my of my unit here in the office. Fantastic job. They do a great, great job. Um, no complaints. We were set up and going on day one. I mean, no hiccups at all. Uh, one day install, second day we were doing training with the staff. They picked it up real quick, real easy. And I was doing scans on day one playing with the unit. Uh, and since then, no hiccups or issues. So um, can't speak highly enough about them and, and their crew, and they do a great job. So anyone out there, this is you know this little demo and tutorial is just for people out there that are, are on Dell Town that are kind of looking for um, uh, that CBCT unit and trying to compare and contrast. Um, this kind of gives you a little bit of info on, on this unit and some of the image quality. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. So this is the main window. Uh, this is just a test patient. Uh, we'll show another patient later on with uh, more um, crown and bridge work and pathology. But this just is a very nice clean image and kind of shows you uh, the kind of the basic features. Uh, and our first window here on the uh, the upper two windows, you can see follow my mouse here. Uh, we've got our axial slices here on the upper left. We, on the lower left here, we've got our coronal slices. On the lower right, we have our sagittal slice. And on the upper right here, we have our 3D rendering. And you can manipulate these in any way you want. So here we can manipulate our, our 3D rendering. I apologize if my computer is running a tad slow. The recording software is slowing down my computer a bit. Not too much, though. So you can zoom in, zoom out. So that gives you a little bit something to play with and show the patient. Kind of gives a little bit of a wow factor with the 3D rendering. Um, on the lower bottom, we have our histogram that's always uh, on the bottom that starts off. And we'll remove that there in a second once we're done with it. And on the right side panel, we have all of our... Uh, tools and, and functions here that we use in the software. So to kind of get started, my workflow, I usually start off with a histogram. I make sure that my contrast and brightness is where I like it to view the images. So you can adjust this however you want. Um, you, know, you can kind of play around with this, move the brightness, the contrast. Um, so I kind of have it about where I want it. So right there is fine. Um, you can adjust here the color uh, of your 3D rendering. And then uh, I like to make presets for some things. If I find something I like, I'll make a preset of it. Um, I like this view. This is kind of fun view. This is called an x-ray view. And this just lets you see the 3D rendering here. And kind of a, a, an x-ray view. Fun for the patients. You can see all the uh, the, uh, the root anatomy of the teeth. And, and if they have any root canals or, or crowns and crown and bridge work, you can see that as well there. So that's kind of fun. Uh, usually once I'm done with the histogram real quick, I'll turn it off just to move it out of the way for me. Uh, you can click it right here on this uh, on the right side here. This is the histogram. Take it off. Makes our images a little bigger. Uh, we have our uh, crosshairs here that are set up. We've got our. Uh, they allow us to view the image and manipulate the image. Uh, you can turn these on or off. So a lot of times I'll start off with them on and then I'll turn them off once I want to um, look at something a little bit more closely and don't want those lines all over the image. Um, you can also right click here. Um, again, you can adjust the contrast and everything there. I'll right click. A lot of times I'll take off this, those little heads that are in the corner here, right there. They sometimes get in my way. They kind of give you an idea of the orientation, the view. So when you move it, manipulate it, the head, the head will move. Um, I'll usually take those off just to get them out of my way. Uh, and starting off, yeah, you can view your image up and down, nice and easy. Easy to manipulate there. Uh, you can manipulate your sagittal um, slices, your coronal slice, very easy. Okay. 
Um, so as far as viewing, I mean, the, the images this, this unit takes is great. Um, this is a 10 by 8 field of view that you're seeing here uh, on the 3D rendering. Um, perfect for implant planning. Uh, a lot of times I'll capture wisdom teeth with it fine. Um, I can adjust the patient's positioning if I want to view the sinuses or if I want to view the TMJs a bit better. Um, so you can capture just about anything you want on, on, this, uh, on this machine with, uh, with this nice 10 by 8 field of view. Uh, it has 160 micron voxel size. Uh, if you go down to the 4 by 4 four centimeter by four centimeter field of view you will get a little bit better resolution and you get down to a 120 micron voxel size um, but I'll tell you one thing I really love about this software and this is one of the unique features I love about this software is the ability to manipulate these images any way you want to cross to, to cut obliquely or get any type of view you want in these images and I'll show you what I mean right now so uh, say for instance, you know, usually when I'm looking through an image real quick, I'll you know I'll go through the axial slice real quick, just look at symmetry, making sure I'm not seeing anything different on either side, um, any obvious periapical peri lucency, something going on. But uh, let's go down to the, mandib the mandible real quick. Okay, so a lot of times what I'll do, this is this is what I like. Okay, so right here, see how I'm clicking and then I'm dragging, and I can turn this view any way that I want. And I like to line up. Uh, my sagittal cr crosscut here with the with the um, length of the mandible and right here I'm gonna move this image up here you can get a nice great view of all the teeth in one shot and it just makes it really nice really easy one little button here I'm gonna push I'm gonna sharpen the image just a tad I like to sharpen up the image uh, a little bit to get me just a little bit of clarity a little bit better see those PDL, lig PDL ligaments a little easier you can see the the canals a little easier so in this you can see in this instance how I can see everything just scroll through real easily really nicely um, you, just, you get some great images here with the with the R100 so again you can see the same thing on the other side a lot of times I'll manipulate the image here and move on to the patient's right side and again we can kind of put angle that however we want and get a good nice view on this side now for endo this is what I really like this is fantastic to view the canals a little better so say we want to look at something here on uh, you know this one's a nice straight canal right here on number um, this one's here number 29 it looks like so right here number 29 I can manipulate this blue line here we go our coronal slice you can kind of see how it's not matching up right with the canal easy rotate the image and you can get to see that canal perfectly I'm gonna turn off my crosshairs here and here in this view you can see really nicely the entire length of that canal all because we manipulated the image a little better to line it up perfectly with that canal and you can do this is a great one trying to line up molars real well uh, premolars viewing some of that interesting canal anatomy we can take a look up here let's take a look at number let's see this would be number four. This would be number five on this image here. Got to get my orientation here. Forget which side I'm on, for left or right. So here again, lining up this image a bit, and we can see those that nice buccal lingual root on number five. And you can cut through and view that image real nicely. You can see those canals really nicely in the image. So that does a lot of good, and I love being able to manipulate the images that quickly and that easily when I'm trying to diagnose. So that kind of gives you an idea there on the the images and how to easily go through and manipulate these. Again, makes it really really nice. Uh, as far as on the right side, our view our buttons here. Um, um, this is just basic buttons. These allow you to switch around the uh, the boxes. So just depending on your viewing preference, how you like to view things, it'll move things around for you. I usually keep it here at the status quo. Um, this just gives you the um, all the planes, how they're cutting through in the in the three D rendering. It gives you that information there. So as you move these planes, it'll move in your three D rendering. So pretty simple there. Nothing too flashy. That's one of the nice things about this software. It's not crazy flashy. It does exactly what you need it to do. And like I said, if you need and then for implant planning, if that's what you're doing, Blue Sky Plan is as my recommendation. That's my go-to. I do all my my plans digitally and print off my surgical guides. 
again little filters here to play with the images uh, measurements and overlays you can measure and um, do just about anything with the image just like you would with any other software um, you know measure the length of a canal there you go and uh, I'll usually like to make little notations um, you know, I like to use the arrow feature here I'll put little arrows for patients when I'm looking at things to kind of draw their attention you can put circles here squares whatever type of thing you'd like to to um, uh, mark things I like to do it while I'm diagnosing and doing my review of uh, the scan. I'll go through and make markings. Then I'll, I'll go through down here and it'll keep a list of all the markings I've made. So if I'm going through and viewing the images, let's say we get away from where we were here and I change here, I change here. Now you see that my, my little markings are gone. If you want to jump to one real quick, double click. Double click, nice and easy, double click. It takes you to it real quick, no problems. You can also give these names. Um, to remind yourself, so maybe it was a, you know, number three had a periapical radial lucency. Yeah, you can just type that in, and it keeps a nice record of everything you've you've looked at. Uh, that's just that's those basic panels there. Here under the tools, you can add implants. They have a little implant library that you can add more to. I don't use it very often because, like I said, I'm using Blue Sky Plan. Uh, there is a nerve tracing feature, which I'll show in a moment. You can do fun dynamic cuts and different cuts on the 3D rendering. This is a dynamic cut through the uh, uh, looks like through the through the coronal view, so you can cut through the image any way you want, and it's kind of fun to show the patient if you're looking at something a little bit more detail. You can see a little bit more of the root structure on certain teeth, and you can play with that. Let's see here. You can take a uh, quick screenshots of any of the uh, any of the views here. Um, exporting and importing DICOMs very easy with uh, the iDixel software. This is the export to DICOM. It exports as a file. You can export it anywhere. Just export to your desktop if you want. I usually do the Axial Slice series here. 160 micron uh, slices. Saves it to my desktop. There you go. Once you send it, you're done. You can all you also use a uh, Jay Morita's one volume viewer, uh, which you can send with a a DICOM file and if you're sending it to a colleague or a specialist and they don't have any type of viewing software uh, Jay Morita provides the the viewing software for them so it's pretty much the same as uh, the full iDixel software we have here um, other than it's, it's just missing, missing a couple little bells and whistles but they can view it just fine uh, next up, you can actually use, uh, it's called Curved NPR View. So this allows us to go through and, and look at uh, the sectional slices of the jaw in a, in a panoramic curve. So if you click here, this little button here, this is our little tracing feature. You just go through and trace our curve, and this will go through and give us slices. So this is nice if you, um, are using this for, if you are using iDixel for your implant planning. This allows you to go through and look at the cross-sectional cuts. It'll produce a little panoramic here, which you can adjust. And you can go through and change or view your slices. Well, does a nice job of that. So if we're looking specifically in the mandible here, you can go through and view all of the, uh, the bone in its cross-section. Oh, pretty easy there. If you were to go through, you can trace the mandibular canal. Um, you can see the mental foramen there popping out right through here. And you can use your uh, tracing feature to go through and trace this canal uh, through this view. Looking at this cross-sectional view is easiest, just going through the slices and clicking on the mandibular canal. And it'll trace it, and it'll mark it for you, just like any other software. So all of these softwares are really similar. Um, they all have their pros and cons. Like I said, this one, it does everything just pretty easily and just right. Uh, although one of the, like I said, the biggest one I really, really love about this one is, again, the ability to manipulate and turn these images in any direction I want to view very quickly and very easily the slices and diagnose easier from it. It just makes my world so much easier. I went through from viewing my DICOM files and taking, you know, 10-15 minutes to view them when I was, you know, starting off to be able to manipulate these images very quickly and to do an entire, look through an entire scan in a matter of, you know, a couple minutes. Uh, once you get the hang of it, it's very, very easy. 
Um, as far as the Merida, um, you know, the, the the resolution and the, the image, you get a great image with the, the Merida unit. Uh, I've been very happy with it. Um, haven't had any, any issues. Um, never needed had a need for any more. It really gives me exactly what I need. Um, one thing I didn't show here, you can right click on these images and you can adjust the thickness. So right now we're viewing in a one millimeter slice. Um, you can take it down all the way to, um, and make it smaller. Um, usually I'll change it if I'm doing some endo work. I'll, you can change the 500 microns and view it a little bit. You get a little bit more um, um, kind of distortion in the image. Not distortion, but just some graininess and some, some noise in the image when you take it down a little smaller. Thickness, you know, go down 160 micron there. So now, before I forget, I was about to leave you guys without showing another uh, patient image. I've cropped the top of the screen, as you can see. I've removed part of that window uh, to not display uh, the patient's information uh, and make it uh, confidential and anonymous. But in this image, again, you can see here, obviously this is a little different uh, patient. We've got a lot more crown and bridge work, so you're going to see some more scattering in that 3D rendering. Uh, I'm going to pull up here. I've done a little bit of um, note-taking on some of these images, but I'm going to clean this up a little. I'm going to brighten this up a little bit so you can see a little bit more. And this is a patient who had uh, come in. She was complaining of some issues with uh, number 12. Um, so we had marked here, take my crosshairs off. You can see here, number 12 has a crown, um, and she has a periapical radiolucency there where that arrow is. So it looks like I'm uh, on the side of the root there, um, and might be in a, a lateral accessory canal, but um, you know she's having symptoms. Um, she ended up being referred, and um, root canal treatment was done. <laughs> Uh, on this patient, but this was an interesting case because on reviewing the scan, um, this is where these CBCT images come out really nicely. Um, she had a large uh, lesion on number two that was draining into her sinus that she was asymptomatic uh, with and I was completely unaware of until we caught it. And here, I've marked it on here, we'll double click here and bring up that image. And you can see here where I've circled on this image, um, that radiolucency there. I'm going to turn it off here. There we go. You can see that radiolucency all around this tooth here, and it's com you can see we've lost the definition here in that cortical plate. We see it. This um, we see the drain. This drainage, um, and the infection has gone through the cortical plate and is draining into her sinus here. And we can see here. Um, you can see this radio uh, opacity here. And that's some of that drainage into that sinus. So um, this is, you know, a lesion that was discovered um, just by, you know, reviewing her her case. So um, this is where these these um, these images really, really, um, you know, diagnose, you know, asymptomatic lesions like this that would have never been known until things had gotten bad enough. You can see it here in our coronal view. There. And again, I just want to show this image. Obviously not to just show you a perfect, clean patient like we saw before that has absolutely no restorative work whatsoever. I wanted to show you a patient that had, has had some, and you can, can see here in the axle view, I'm going to go through and show the scatter that we're getting. So obviously we've got a lot of crown and bridge work um, on the posterior, so we're getting a lot of scatter there. Um, this one is, there we go, this one is sharpened. Uh, but you're going to get some scatter, and that's normal with any any machine you're going to be using. You're going to get that. You can see some these root canals here, root canal treated, uh, number 19. And these have all been root canal treated as well. And you're going to get some, some um, got to percha, give off a little bit more um, of the scatter than others. You get some scatter there. And same thing in our other views here, as we can see. And you're going to get some distortion in the image and some scatter, but that gives you a little bit of an idea. You can still get pretty good images, though, even with you know this much metal in the mouth. And these are all PFMs in her mouth and posting cores. Um, so yeah, a little bit of extra there. Um, didn't want to leave you without seeing that. Little things to play with. So overall, you know, just a quick overview and uh, demo of the software. Um, if you guys have any questions, you know, go ahead and post them, and uh, I'll answer them as best I can. But uh, overall, um, hope you guys like what you see. And uh, again, if you have any questions, um, 
feel free to post. Um, and also David Hanning with Dental TI. Uh, he deals with these units every day, and um, he can answer any other questions you have. So take care.